South of the medicine line now, family and friends are seeking justice for Mika Westwolf. The 22-year-old was killed on March 31st by a driver while walking home to the Flathead Reservation in Montana. No charges have been laid in Westwolf's death, but reporting on the matter has suggested there is an ideological element to the crash. HuffPost crime reporter Drusilla Moorhouse wrote an extensive story on the matter this week. She joins us now from San Diego, California. Drusilla, thanks uh, for joining us and for your reporting on this. Um, can you tell us what is believed to have happened in the early morning hours of March 31st, 2023? Uh, yeah, Micah Westwood was walking home on Highway 93 um, and was struck by a car uh, and killed. Um, it was a cold, wet night, um, so she couldn't even walk on the shoulder, um, I mean, like the, the grass beside the shoulder if she wanted to. Um, that's according to the legal advocate of the family. Um, the driver, allegedly, she hasn't been um, arrested or charged yet, so, uh, but it's believed to be Sunny White. Um, and the reason this has gotten a lot of attention um, is her children are named Aryan and Nation. And we are already seeing um, the way uh, Indigenous people are treated uh, in, in many circumstances. So the idea that even though it was dark, it's entirely plausible based on who she is that it could be a hate crime. It's not my place to say that, but right. that's definitely a perception from a number of human rights um, organizations. Uh, and we'll get to that in a second, but uh, as you mentioned, there's been some serious concerns raised about this investigation. Can you walk us through some of those? Yeah, and I think that's the main issue here. Um, the family is willing to accept um, whatever the truth is. And if, if the truth is that the evidence shows that it was an accident, they are fine with that. You know, it's a devastating tragedy no matter what. Um, the problem they have and a lot of um, Indigenous people have in the United States, and I suspect in Canada as well, is the way they are spoken to by law enforcement. Um, particularly, they weren't communicative with the family, um, the highway patrol officer, the lead investigator, didn't talk to them for a couple weeks after um, the crash. And when he did, he was uh, like misinformed but by a few facts of the case. Um, so it didn't seem particularly familiar. And what was really upsetting is the condescending tone and the victim shaming is what how they perceived it. Now, as you mentioned, there's human uh, rights groups, including the Montana Human Rights Network, that have called for this case to be investigated as a hate crime. Uh, can you yeah. walk us through why some believe that is what this is? Um, well, it's, I think, <laughs> the names of the children um, and of of the alleged um, woman who struck her, th there being Aryan and Nation, um, is to some a very clear tell that she's a white nationalist. Um, and so that's, that's, that's why, uh, well, that's not why, the, the, the county attorney um, pointed out to me that Montana doesn't have like a hate crime law per se it, it might come up if there is a sentencing um but that's several states like texas doesn't either so it it can't be prosecuted as one what regardless. has right well, what has miko westwolf's family had to say about all this they're frustrated um obviously very they're grieving and it's makes it so much harder to go through this process when they're grieving their daughter and people um, in it, when authorities are treating them as though they believe that she 
is is not a victim in this case mm -hmm. that whatever the circumstances are she could be at fault herself so that's upsetting and they just want they just want to know the facts it's it's they're feeling all of these emotions and yeah it's mostly it's frustration and just grief and complications and being treated so poorly by authorities all right Drusilla, we'll have to leave it there, but uh, appreciate you taking some time to speak with us about this. Oh, it's my pleasure. And I do want to say that a lot of the initial reporting here was done by Judd Legum from Popular Information. So he's the one who put this on the radar for other reporters to cover.